Okay. Here we go, here we go. Um, Mom, you look good on camera. Thank you. The movie star. <laughs> act. There's only going to be three people that watch this. Me, you, and Eric. Oh, really? I mean, no, you tell me. Who else are you going to tell to watch this? This is going to be on... Uh... Yeah, but, Facebook, or, you know, yeah, but who are you going to tell to watch this? Oh, I'm going to share it on my thing. Oh, now you're going to share it because yeah. you want it? Uh-huh. You feel like all those Nigerian guys? <laughs> Identity booth. How you guys doing? We have a special guest back in the booth, second time. Are you still nervous? No, I'm okay. You feel better now? Yes. She was. She did good on the first show. You guys should check out the first show. If you're watching this, the next show will pop up in one of these corners. Check it out. She did great. She answered five questions about having me as her son. It's pretty awesome. Like I'm a cool guy. But today we're talking about news, mother. Mm. We're talking about news, politics, social events. Are you up to date with your social events and politics? I'm trying. You watch, how, how do you get your news? Through the news? No, wrong answer. It should be through the Identity Group podcast. Oh, Come on, mother. Okay. Identity, you asked me. Okay. You didn't say through social media. Okay. Through Identity Booth. All right. So now we know where she gets her news. So let's see if she's really paying attention to the news. So, mommy, uh, something recently happened. Uh, you know, you know about the shutdown, right? Yes. We got a video about the shutdown. It should be up, so that'll pop up somewhere here. But the shutdown happened, and now it's like four days away from happening again. But the Democrats and Republicans are trying to make a deal, mm-hmm. and they think they've come up to a deal. Tell me what you think about building a wall. Do you are you okay with the wall? You know what, to tell you the truth, first of all, I don't like going into the politics. You have but, to like it. Okay, no, I don't. Why not? Because they're all a bunch of liars. The politicians. The politicians. Okay. I mean, it, not just here, even from where I came from. Where you come from? I'm, I came from Nigeria. Oh, okay. So, it's so I don't like, but the only thing, I follow the news. And I don't know why he's asking me now because they always blame me when I say I'm watching TV. This stop listening to the news. That's where you get all the bad things. If you don't listen to the news, you don't know what is going on. To go back to this uh, building the wall, you know what? It doesn't matter. They can build the wall from the ground all the way to the sky. Mm-hmm. It won't stop these people coming in. The most, I mean, the most. Um, illegal immigrants in any country, they don't have to come through uh, jumping the wall. The most of them right now are the ones that came through the airport, the ones that get the visa mm. to come to any country. When they get there, the visa expires and they leave. They stay in the, in the country, whether you UK, American or anywhere, if they think whoever is deciding on this building, this wall thing, that this building wall can stop people coming in, they need to think again. Because majority of the non-immigrants are coming through the airports. So are they going to build a wall to the airports? So I don't believe in this wall, uh, wall building. And that's word to your mother. <laughs> Well done, mommy. I, I did not know you know that much about it. Oh, there you go. Nice hey. <laughs> so, over here educating y'all. That is true. That we know historically speaking and just statistically speaking that the wall will not solve the problem, which is there is airports in the country. You know, sixty percent of people who are in this country illegally are here because they overstayed their visa. And there's no wall on the Canadian border. Do you think that Trump just doesn't like brown people? You know, I don't know what he likes. I can't even tell you what he likes. 
That is a good question. He doesn't even like himself. He doesn't. <laughs> Look at the way he takes care of himself. <laughs> Why are you gluing that stuff to your head? Just be bald. You are 70 years old. Just be bald. No one's going to be... Look, if you were 21 years old and bald, people would laugh at you. But I know some people that can pull it off. Just be bald, man. Like, I don't get that. I stopped coloring it. Yeah. <laughs> Stop coloring yourself. Why are you doing that? Yeah. Why, why are you cut? You look like a Cheeto puff. Like, you just walk around. What's wrong with you? He got problems. But all right. All right, that's fair. You know, that, that's pretty much all for the while. The, the new bill is supposedly supposed to have $1.3 billion. I haven't heard that news yet. It just came out this morning, but it's supposed to be $1.8 billion for the fencing. And this is all contingency. It hasn't been confirmed yet. So this is all with, like, a theory that if it goes to plan, but... The thing that kind of struck me as strange about the bill, they still haven't talked about relief effort for hurricanes. That That's what I was about to say. For that, even if they give this war 500,000, just, just, I'm just saying that. Do you know how many people can benefit from that 500,000 in the United States? Every corner you go, you see homeless people. Every corner you go, you see people carrying things, please help me, I'm homeless. Every corner, every hospital you go, you see all the veterans that fought for this country, sovereign. We have our own problem inside here. And be, trust me, it's not the people, it's not the people coming in here that is creating the problem. I think we are our own enemies. So all those money they want to waste on building walls just to stop some people to coming in here. I don't think they can use it. They can use it inside here to build their own family. Mm. You want to call this the mother booth? Like, because you want to take over the show? You got all the good gems. You asked me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, I, that is true. Uh, I always tell people, like, I'm. you know me, I'm not a big component of war. I think militaries and all of this stuff are dumb. Like, why are we fighting in 2019? In 2019, we can't just sit down and talk over some coffee. Like, we, we got to shoot each other. Mm -hmm. So, you're right. And you're right. There's a homeless person three blocks away from here. He's there every day, but he works across the street from a 24 hours, 24 hour a day gas station. Mm -hmm. You could work there. You could shower there. You mm -hmm. could eat there. You could live there till you get your own apartment. But I, I really just think American people are lazy. But that is a contingency of people who have a fear of the government support. Because if you're being told you can get your cheese here, why would you ever go out and get your own cheese? I'm not going to say they're lazy. I'm going to say they're spoiled. How many people who are And they took, some, they took things for granted. Mm -hmm. You know, because I walk where you see people that would be telling you, why do I need to walk? I get my free, you know, free health. I get food stamp. Why do I need to work? They get free housing. But the people that are suffering most are the hardworking Americans that we work for these people to support them. But some of these people, they sit at home watching soap opera from morning till night, and they still get everything they want. Do you know who uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is? You know, that is AOC. She's a liberal uh, Democrat who is in the House Senate or she's a congresswoman lady now and she represents New York's district. Oh, okay. But um, she had a proposal where after your 10, your 10 million dollar, you will be taxed 70 percent. Mm -hmm. yeah. You agree with that? Do you think because the rich aren't carrying their weight? A lot of you guys are getting your tax returns back now. And if you're like me, I just, I'm, I made, That's I made cool. a lot more than I, <laughs> I made a lot more, but I did not get a lot more back. I gave clear way over $40,000 in taxes last year. So I didn't get a tax return, but do you feel that the rich are paying the top 3% is making more than the middle class. You don't think they should be paying more after your $10 million? Like, mommy, what would you do with a million dollars? You would never be able to spend it. Well, 
at this point, I will be able because I would like to clear all my kids' uh, student loans. Even if they, even if Nafi and Luke both had a hundred. Oh, don't mention names. Sorry. Oh, mm -hmm. sorry. Even if your two kids had a hundred thousand dollars each, two hundred thousand dollars, you would still have eight hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. You got you, you own your own house. Mm -hmm. You can set this up around for property tax and the mortgage. Mm -hmm. You buy three cars and drive a different one every other day, and you would still never run out of money. My whole thing is. When you see someone who is making $10 million and is only paying $200,000 in taxes, that's not, not fair. Yeah, that's not that's fair. chicken change. I believe that the rich should be taxed at a higher rate because you are not just doing it for you. You are no longer working for yourself. That's right. And you okay. had to have stepped on hundreds of thousands of people's backs to make it that far. You have, like, there's no reason why Walmart employees should be on food stamp. Mm -hmm. There's no reason why you're if you are working 40 hours a week and you are still need government assistance, it's not your fault. It's the fault of the government for not employing higher wages. The rich have grown richer at a 75 percent increase, while the middle class has only increased by one point three percent over 15 years. And all those taxes were coming from the middle class. Yeah. So yeah, from middle because you know when I like last week when I was trying to do my uh my tax return, the lady was telling me, oh, uh, this I'll be like, why am I getting this back? You know, last year, year before, you know, I got so so so. She, she said, yes, the way the tax bracket is now, you make more. I say I make more. Where it is? Mm. Where is the more money that I'm making? Say, well, you know, that's the tax bracket. So I look at it, it's just like, okay, that's fine. As long as it's enough, because right now, it's like I'm using Paul, uh, Peter, to rob Paul. Mm. So I'm just waiting for that tax return to give it back to them for my property tax. So that that is that is nothing. You're not getting That's what I'm saying. The middle class are the ones suffering. The, that's why, you know, all this shutdown, it's, it has only as, uh, affect certain people not mm. everybody mm. not everybody because some people are like okay you can show them for the whole six months it doesn't have no effect on them but the people that are really really affected do they care why are we suffering our people just because you want to build a wall and this money and you're going to give them retro what sense does that make you still going to pay them back that's the point i don't get so it's just like a punishment yeah. for your own people. Because if you go, if you call it follow and you go and give it back to them, why are you making them suffer? I mean, so this is, I mean, you know, like I said, I'm not in politics. They do whatever they want, but they have to have people's mind. Like, okay, if I do this, how far is it going to affect my people? But I don't think anybody, the both sides are not thinking. So, you don't think that the Republicans are just outright wrong? But they have, they, you know, um, okay, the, pre they, the president is responsible for the country, correct? That's right. So when the government is not working and the country is not working, whose fault should oh, be? Oh, it's president's okay. fault because he thinks it's like the, uh, the last say. So I think he's using his power. All right, well. He's using his power. But All that's right. okay. All right, so then let's let's get into science, mother. Okay. <laughs> Do you know the difference between climate and weather? Um, what little, is little. what is climate? I think it's uh like we were discussing. I was thinking the climate has something to do with the global warming, but as you were explaining to me, that it's two different entities. Okay. So okay. weather I know much about is when it's changing from you know we have seasonal when it comes to weather. Okay. The climate I'm not quite sure about it. All right. So in in then in basically you got the gist of it. That's good. You got more than Trump did, and I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, mommy. Basically, weather are individual segments of what we see day to day happening in our atmosphere in our in our general population of 
You, whether it's, is it snowing today? Yes. Is it raining today? Yes. Is it cold today? Yes. Climate is the gathering, a trend of weather that dictates what happens. So basically, climate is just a bunch of weather combined. Seeing every day on how it goes, you can then gauge climate off of that. So if we were talking small scale, a day of rain is weather. A week of rain is the climate. Okay. And that's a concept that's very, even to a fifth grader, they will understand that concept. That's not, I mean, you can Google it. I'm not here to fucking explain everything to you. But if you want to understand. Don't say about what, what I'm in here. Not allowed to curse on the identity booth. No, you're not. Not, not just, even, not even out of the identity booth. But you, you still can say it on the. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Okay. Can I? Can I? Yeah, you okay. can. All right. So look it up, figure it out. But basically, that's been going on. Do you think global warming is real, mummy? Well, you know, uh, when you say science, I'm not good in science, I'm not a methodologist, but um, the way the things are going, it's just like you can't just understand what is going on about weather. Because sometimes when you listen to the news, the weatherman will tell you, it's going to rain tomorrow, it's going to sun tomorrow, but when tomorrow comes, it might be like raining all day. You know, we, we can't even differentiate between the season anymore. For instance, where I came from in America, we used to have four seasons, which is summer, you know, fall, spring, and then winter. You can't tell anymore. All last year, December, I mean, we always see snow, especially on Christmas Day, people pray for it. Last Christmas, we were like close to 60 degrees. Everybody was shocked. Christmas weather, I mean, December weather was so mild. Now we got to January, February. It's like <laughs> the winter. And what a lot of people believe is going on is that the climate is shifting. The weather increase and in implements is shifting the climate, basically shifting it because it's not, well, eight people have died during the winter vortex, which is basically a cold storm of just horrible weather. And people are dying out there. And People confuse that, you know, oh, it's cold today, so it can't be hot another day. The thing about our concern about climate control and the damage that we're doing to our planet is more on the lines of instead of you getting a small little tsunami every six, six months, you're now getting six every other month. It causes a rampant increase. People said, oh, it's cold. Well, yeah, that's because there's more moisture near to freeze in order to create this cold polar vortex. So it's, I'm not a scientist either. I'm not a meteorologist, as you say, stated. But it's hard to argue with the evidence. And, you know, the only way you would know what the weather is like is if you actually go out and experience it. And there's one place that Donald Trump is, rarely goes to. And that's the Midwest. He's either in Miami or in Washington. So so if you're going to be taking your advice from anybody, I would definitely not be taking it from someone who could easily leave a tsunami where you're at and hop on a plane and go to someplace warm because those people tend to not be looking out for you. So last topic, mummy. You ready for this one? Okay. This one's this one is in your line of work. You what do you what do you think about vaccinations? Are you a fan of them? You want some water? Well, um oh, now you want some water. Sorry. Tell me about vaccinations, mommy. Well, I'm in um uh, healthcare field. Mommy, what what was the first thing? A no rule. No, okay. So um uh, you vaccinated you know your kids? All my kids were vaccinated. Why did you vaccinate us? Because they said it was good for you. Who I said know. it? I mean, the doctor was doctor's order. Then, I didn't know. Because, you know, when you heard about all the um, all the disadvantage compared to the advantage. What was the disadvantages of vaccination? I mean, 
hey, about all these uh, great diseases that if you don't get these, you have the chances of getting these, okay. and uh, you know, and of course, you know, you want good, you want your, you want to live to see your kids, you don't want them to sick on you, mm -hmm. you believe it. All those fascination, you know, is it's okay, but right now, it depends on the body of individual, you know, like for instance, the flu fasting. Mm -hmm. I used to get because the nature of my job, you have to get it. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I find that, that each year that I got it, I always fall sick. Those are the most time that I missed work. Then I kept telling my, uh, my doctor, like, you know what? What's the purpose of getting this thing if it's going to make me sick? Mm -hmm. They said, well, it make you sick, but it give you a better chance of not being hospitalized mm -hmm. compared to not getting it. Okay, but this thing is really making me sick. So I told my husband, I mean, my um, doctor, one time, one year, it's been almost like eight years now. I said, you know what? Let's try this. I'm not going to get this flu vaccine this year. Let's see what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not. Mm -hmm. For the past eight years, I've never got it. Mm -hmm. And I've never been sick of flu or cold, you know. Even though at my job, you have to give excuse. So that's what I get. I think the doctor's um, um, excuse um, thing to my, to my job. But I'm not saying because of that, because it worked for me like that, it will work for somebody else like that. It depends on individual belief. Because sometimes you believe this. If you believe this thing is going to work for you, it will work for you. If you say it's not going to work for you, it might not work for you. But my belief, if you're going to give me something that is more going to make me sicker than I am, mm -hmm. it's just the same thing with like a medication. When they give you medication, when you go to the doctor, you say you have a headache, and they give you aspirin or Tylenol. But when you read that the side effect, Oh, it's going to damage your kidney. It's going to do this. It's going to do that. It's going to do this. So what am I thinking is I'm, I might as well just live with my, That is my own personal thing. I'm not giving this up for anybody, but that is my own belief when it comes to fascination. Now, and I ask this question, obviously, with a point. How many, you don't have any kids living in the house anymore, right? No. All right. So you just go to work, come home mm -hmm. and do your thing. Mm hmm so your chances of contact with other people who are, might be carrying the flu or diseases is limited? No, it's not because I work with the uh, public. You work with the public, but it's still limited. It's, like, it's not like you're the one examining them. No. Okay. So you're you, at most, you pass around papers, which can be hand wash and covering them up. So yes. you're very well protected. A lot of people confl conflict this. What my mom has described is basically she has her defense mechanism, which is just distance from people. That's how she managed to not make it. And her getting the the, fact, the the flu shot wouldn't be beneficial to her because she doesn't come into contact with enough that people who that. would have it in the first place. But when you had all your kids in the house and all of them played with other kids and then all of us came at home at one time, yeah, you would definitely need it then back then. Me as a Young man, I don't need the flu shot. I mean, I have an immune system to protect me from it, but I still get it every year. Why? It, it, wait, can you even, last time you can even recall me being sick was when I was like seven. Mm -hmm. I haven't been sick since I was seven. So, oh, there he is. Look at mommy. Thank God for that. Go ahead, say it, Thank God yeah. for that. It's not me. It's not you. So with that information in hand, why do I get it? I'm healthy, I'm strong, because I come in direct contact with people every day who are sick with it or have some unknown disease. I also have to get a thousand other shots. But do you know what's happening in Washington right now? They have a thing? Yeah, of uh, the measles. Oh. MS, MSRS, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's a bunch of people saying, using this same thing, I believe. Your beliefs are useless to you. If you are dead, people are saying, I believe my child will survive getting the measles. Mm -hmm. I have stats that say your belief are useless. Mm -hmm. 
because there's a bunch of kids dead. 35 of them have died so far. And this is something that people fail to believe. We're so good at what we do, we forget why we do it. We used to vaccinate everyone by force because we wanted to eradicate measles. There hasn't been a reported case of measles in this country in almost 20 years until now. No. So we you, we had it we made it disappear. And because of a few little chuckles in the world who are saying that these vaccines aren't working because the big argument is if I vaccinate my child, it will give him Down syndrome. You are an idiot and you probably should have swallowed your child. There is no such thing. Like, show me, show me any article you can find that correlates them that doesn't start with myhealth.com. Like, people are, they're fond to believe. And it's baffling to me why they don't want to do it. Because you will not vaccinate your child, but you will take them to McDonald's and buy them a Happy Meal. Yeah, yeah. You will thing. not vaccinate your child, but you will let sit them down there and let them drink Pepsi all day. And I think the whole point of vaccination is like prevention is better than cure. You want to make sure you prevent, you know, all these diseases. It's better to prevent it than when it comes and you have to, it might be too late then. Because you have to get all this fascination at certain age. Yeah. And I don't understand where pe where people get there. Like, you have people who've gone to medical school. I know being a doctor is hard because I tried and I failed. So, you, as a person who doesn't even have a You're GED. Not You're not failed. Mommy, let me. Mm -hmm. You're interrupting the, mon the monologue. As a person who has advanced knowledge on what's going on, who has read a few research papers on how these diseases spread, it baffles me that people will sit here and take the advice of celebrities. People who, who drink wine and champagne for dinner. You drink water from your tap. You are not the same person. Your kids are not the same. Your genetic build is not the same. So please, vaccinate your child and stop uh, stop sending your kids to the bottom like you, you should as a as a parent you should want your kid to bury you never the other way around but um for all intents and purposes that's the identity booth this is the new segment mom well done you made it through your second show good job you go. high five all right where can they find us you can find us on um youtube uh, Twitter, Instagram, okay. uh, what is Apple? Apple, yeah, Apple, Google Play, Google Play, Player FM, Play FM, and uh, you can always go and uh, say give Facebook? comments. Yeah, I said Facebook, okay. you can always say uh, comments, mm -hmm. share, please. Okay, it's a good one. I want you to share it and I want to see that they're flowing. The thumbs up. Love it, like it, share it, and give comments. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks for coming on at Den Booth. As always, I'm your host, Hero. I appreciate you guys as we constantly try to identify with you as you identify with us. You guys take care of yourself. Kind of forever. Okay. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that is great. I'm having fun. Yeah, I know you're having fun. This is <laughs> what do you think I do it for? <laughs> now you know why I do it. We should have made Milk one do one. Don't mention names. Oh, we can't mention names. That's cool. No one, he's never gonna watch this. No one cares about him.